right. Awesome, awesome. Hey, there we go. Let's see how long the delay is in between those two. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's about a 10 second delay. Hey, Astrid. Happy to see you follow me over from TikTok. It means the world. You even beat me to the first comment. Wow. <laughs> All right. So we got the Jania Solo fan films compilation that our friend over on TikTok had asked us uh, or had told me about. So I'll definitely want to check that out before too long. But as that is an hour and 32 minutes... <laughs> I say, let's just look at a few others real quick. You know what? Let's start with something small, something real simple and quick. This must be Star Wars Legacy of Forest Fire Battle Scene. Oh, I see. So it is a whole small set. That's really cool. Let's go with a little bit of some Star Wars X Wing. It's five minutes, 21 seconds, shouldn't be too long. It's gotta start with that. Any rights to anything shown here is, of course, all Sorry Disney, it took so long. and what we're currently was watching is a fan film made accident. by somebody else. This is, of course, Star Wars X Men, a Star Wars fan one film. Begins. This shows you right there. All right, race. We've got a lot of options out there, so pick your targets and watch your six. That's gorgeous. Right. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is absolutely <laughs> gorgeous for being a fan film. This is so cool. That is yeah, some really good Watch out for that burnout! Yeah, of course not. That's a lot of Imperial ships. Are you seeing this? I'm getting some weird power surges. Looks like it's coming from the Senate district. <laughs> Wait, you can be fire! Wait! Hold on! I've lost power, I'm going down! Just give me a second! I can't stabilize! Alright, yep. That's awesome. I love Astrovec droids. Astrovec droids are so hilarious. And they really do add a good amount of comedic relief. We're coming from the south side of the evacuation zone. Missile lock! Good looking decals on the helmets. I know, yeah, I, I didn't know it was all CGI right there after. Uh, I thought the humans in the first few scenes were real. And then I saw the CGI come through. Oh my god. Blast! I, I got it right in my tail! That is a good looking tie-in. Ah! I'm getting over here! Those reflectors are coming in hot! I always liked how they gave the good guys the red lasers and the bad guys the green lasers. I got him! His shields are down! My shields are down! My shields are down! My shields are down! My shields are down! Coming in! I've got a lot! Good news, sir. Good news. Time is your locked in! Ah, Ty Avenger, okay. 
Looks like that destroyer formation is right above the power the signal. Was, yeah, the scale is nuts. The scale is extremely the impressive. No, I wouldn't think so. That that power reading is coming from below the surface. Uh, uh, they seem to really good. I'm picking up a new ship ID. I'm really enjoying the minor details on the face. It's a ship wraith, one. It's a damn ship. Look to the right of the center chambers. What in what? the places? The ship coming out of the Senate chambers. I can't believe it. Okay. That would have been so much cooler than Exegol. That would have been so much cooler than Exegol. Turbo lasers! Coming from the destroyers! Get to cover behind the debris! Man. Oh, this is crazy! Wow. A little bridge! Maybe the real engine? Yeah, I can see that. Unreal is really good at scale like that. Wow, that shook them up. Okay, that was cool. That is so cool that that stuff got no left behind. Because of course, when you jump into hyperspace, you are jumping into a alternate reality. Exegol, 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 Exeg
shaking the screen a bit more than I'd like to make up for how slow the uh, models move. They can do way better than I could ever do, so kudos. Man, cut the bottom of the spinal cord. It mess them up. Through victory, my chains are broken. There in that moment of extreme rage, Malik's eyes were civilized. My lord, had his chance. Begin the bombardment. Destroy the planet. Sir, Lord Revan's orders are inconsequential. Today, the galaxy shall fear the Sith once more. And if Revan doesn't have the strength to make it so, the quest of transfer you must, Admiral. But you will follow these orders, or you will pay the price. Yes, Lord Malak. I don't know this one said it was a real engine. But yeah, Malak was a phenomenal character. Again, kudos to Scott Anderson. This one, yeah, based on the character from George Lucas. I like Daniel Hodge, dang good. Unreal Cinema, Saul Kairath, Jacob Kleiner, mocap actors. Ooh, mocap. Okay, didn't expect mocap. That's awesome. Let's see here. Ooh, we'll stick with the theme of the hung that my absolute the favorite vessel. game. His power, Kotor, but it consumes Two without time. end. He will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. Who you hear talking? That is Darth Treya. Um, that is the female who you meet in uh, Kotor Two. She is the one who wants to actually completely destroy the Force because she views the Force as the problem and the reason why there's so much war and suffering as the Force constantly tries to balance itself. His mere presence kills all around him, slowly feeding him. Darth Nihilus, really badass Sith who got like no exposition. I mean, that's just because he was supposed to be just kind of like a bam for a boss. He's going to get him out. That is what he did. He, he consumed an entire planet's life. The extent of his power cannot be put into words. Uh, his ship kind of, uh, again, the Ravager, it uh, had a lot of persona like he did, uh, whereas Nihilus did not really have a physical body because it had been just eaten by the dark side. Uh, the Ravager had holes all over it and just open compartments to space, but he would just fly it around, no hyperspeed, you would just slowly list between place to place, well I think it, it had to have had hyperspeed, there's no way he just slowly listed all the time, or it would have taken him 
hundreds of years to get places, so. But the ship was very beat up. All life exists to feed your power. His apprentice. Um, I can't believe I spaced on her name. Alright, hold on, this is gonna kill me. This is gonna kill me. Let's see. Uh, no, not Darth Sion. That is not, that is not who his apprentice was, and you know it. This was his apprentice. Visas? Or Visas Mar. She's a Maraluka who are a blind race and they can only see in the forest, but that was her planet that he had just completely wiped out of life. And there we go. Nihilus, Fall of Qatar. That is the home world of Visa and the Maraluka people. Maraluka, Maraluka. No, Maralukas are D&D. Maraluka. There's a lot of things to remember. A lot of, a lot of nouns to remember in Star Wars. Oh, here we go, a nice live action one. Gotta go handle something real quick. without hair. Um, a lot of the Ithorian female Zabrax do have some hair, but it all depends on, usually on horn growth and placement. Um, and then the female will choose to shave or keep her hair and make it work with the horns. But this is a really awesome depiction of a female uh, Zabrak. Come on. We should go back. What are you scared of? The Watchers? No. Are you? Not real. I know that. And this is the Watchers. Hearts of Kyber. Come on, we have to go. Quiet. If <coughs> excuse me, if that is a ball cap, that is an amazing, Come on out, well done ball cap. No, it's you. You scared me half to death. Did you follow us all the way here? You shouldn't go in there. It's forbidden. Says who? Uh, the Jedi Council. And the Watchers? See? They're not real. It's just a fairy tale. The Council clearly states a Jedi may not harvest their crystal until they are deemed ready. I am ready. No, you are not. Master didn't invite us to the gathering this term, so we must be patient. Uh, that is a really awesome trope they put in here. Uh, the Zabraks are an extremely aggressive and very uh, prone to 
take charge kind of people. Um, they are also very warrior forward, so her being so aggressive is very true. A lot of Zabrak Jedi suffer with uh, being over aggressive at times. He's right. It's been like that since the Old Republic. When was the last time either of you even saw Master Alice? I don't know. Exactly. He's off dealing with Jedi affairs that he thinks are more important than our training. So we have to train ourselves. She's got a point. We're going. He's the youngest master in the generation. If he thinks we should wait, then we should listen. Always got the bookworm. I'm not letting you go alone. Of course. Guys? I like this group. This is a fun group. I tried to get them silenced. You shouldn't have come here. We know. We are ready to be in such a sacred place. Sacred? Soon this cave will be nothing more than a memory of Jedi past. It was my fault. I convinced them to come with me. Please, don't punish them. Just me. A Jedi wouldn't punish anyone. It would be a moment of teaching. They'll all be punished accordingly. I guess this is a very fallen Jedi order. Your lightsaber. Uh, that makes more sense. Finally complete. I like that they said though, they kind of set this up, him being the youngest Jedi Master in you know, recent history, it makes sense that he actually turns to the dark side, because turning to the dark side gives you a boost in power and force abilities. So it would make sense, actually, that he would be such a young Jedi Master if he's dabbling in the dark side. Destiny is calling. 
But what about everything that you- When did this one come out? 2017. You taught us! About, about using the force as, as an instrument of peace! Doesn't that mean anything to you? It did once. But now, I know the true limitless power of the Force. Look! It can't be. They are real. So, the legends are true. No matter. That was a cool effect. I like how they look so similar but kind of different. Oh no, I'm ready to ship! I can't believe that just happened. We have to get to the council now! He betrayed us. Everything he taught us was a lie. What are you doing? Come on! Gonna kind of nope out, yeah. <laughs> Besides the Zabrak, seems like uh, she's got the right idea. The other two are better than out of there. Alright, is there a number two? I'm curious now. Written by Brad Lewandowski. Very nice. Story by Chet and Brad. Very good story, you guys. Is there any more? Because that was. Really good. That was outstanding. Yeah, that was really good. I wonder. Pretty much boys. Ah, oh, dang. They've done a few things. They did one like 10 months ago, but sadly, it seems uh, Heart of Kyber Part 1 or whatever is the only one currently that they have. We need to, let's change up the, uh, let's change it up a little bit. I've heard really good things about this one. One month ago, have not seen it yet. Excited to do so with you all. Boy. Cliffhanger? Yeah. <laughs> a real big cliffhanger. I have seen a lot of stuff on Instagram and a few other places about uh, no disintegration, so very excited to watch to watch this one. That was a cool transition. That was cool. That's just a big rat, but you know, it's Star Wars. Cyclops race, okay, okay. They did a really good job with the male Twi'leks uh, makeup and the forehead bulge. Uh, there he is, there's Boss. What was left of the rebels and collected the bounty for the entire team. This is really cool. It was Aphra's idea and an easy 
easy hunt. She's a quick thinker, that one. That's what I'm really going to enjoy about this. With only being a month old, they have a lot to pull from for uh, backstory from canon sources. So it's really cool to hear to hear Aphra mentioned. What was left of the rebel horse? Found a foot and an arm from the two I traveled in my mines. Lord Vader paid you for a foot. It was enough to buy a scan. He never paid me for the rebel spies I disintegrated on Coruscant. I guess my word wasn't good enough. Well, mm, why wait, see I'll tell you. Spies! I don't know what you're talking about, Fed. We are loyal to the Empire. I swear it! Leave us alone, you monster. You have no proof, bounty hunter scum. Leave! Before we call the authorities. Uh, the accent's a bit better. around. I didn't know if it was a, it a disruptor thing right there. I'll be looking at it. That's cool. That's a really good tree. Okay, that's awesome. Screen. He's over here! 
Backstory between Dengar and uh, Boba Fett. He, uh, Dengar eventually makes Boba Fett the best man at his wedding. But yeah, for a lot of their uh, time together as bounty hunters, they were enemies. Scorekeeper is a female goddess of the Trandosha people, though, that uh, for each consecutive kill they make, or successful hunt they make, the Scorekeeper tallies up their score, and whoever has the ultimate score in the end, in the afterlife of Trandoshans, will become the Scorekeeper's husband, or mate. So, very important to them. So, Fett, you didn't bring me out here for a piddly little bell jumper. Why am I? Yes, Boba. Who is our prey? The girl, Miriam Dilagos. Dilagos. The art collector? I thought he was dead. Excellent! I shuckle in the points from this care. It's a little more complicated than that, boss. Come, let us speak someplace more private. Time to hunt! 
just like old times, eh, boss? Shut up, Dengar! I'll take that. Drink. Anyone who takes this garbage to my ship. So of course we got slave one there. There it is. That is Bosk's ship, uh, the Great Hunt. I actually don't know what Dengar's is it's called. Let's find out. I believe that's what they Hound's Tooth. Okay. Boss ship is called the Hound's Tooth. And Dengar's ship is the punishing one. Okay, so yeah, we have Houndstooth, Slave One, and The Punishing One. That was really cool. I really enjoyed that. Roman Santa. Yeah. Hey, kudos. Kudos. That summer and all. So good, so good. This was really, really good. That was awesome. Another clip in here, so I'll have to wait for part two to come out. Sumner. Oh, so the guy who upright it was Boba Fett. That's awesome. And the other guy was Bosk. That's so cool. Chris Burns is Dengar. Dengar was actually really good. I really enjoyed that Dengar. Updated electric bat? No. It's 
the one thing we've been waiting for. Something that will never fail us again, a weapon that is so precise we won't even have to aim anymore. I want to properly review this for you, but first, <laughs> let's see what's in the box. <laughs> I can't wait to open this. It has been oh, years gosh. since the last update, and I'm as excited as a Wookiee on Life Day. <laughs> Before I open this case, I did let's check this for contents integrity amazing. with a deep package inspection. Want to make a difference for peace oh my god join the empire learn valuable <laughs> skills bring order and unity to the galaxy the brand new standard issue so here's some quick facts manufactured by plastic industries it's be so our funny. most modern blaster ever it replaces the good old dc-15 blaster used and loved during the clone wars wow just look at this beauty you can clearly see the improvements over its predecessor Alrighty, let's see what else is in the box apart from the e11 blaster of course there is also a quick start manual but <laughs> who the f reads manuals anyway right so this baby comes with two plasma cartridges and a tactical light which can be attached to the side of the blaster it features three firing modes lethal stun and sting that should be perfect for most combat situations <laughs> imagine the stun buzz jawa <laughs> It also comes with a brand new cooling system, which allows for continued automatic fire. And now, check this out. There is an all new telescopic viewfinder with a new targeting system. You heard right, a targeting system. How sweet is that? Let's check it out. Clones didn't need targeting radars. They just aim. Okay, uh, there seems to be a few minor flaws in the scope. But hey! I can see a little mouse droid. Eh, well, looks promising apart from those glitches, but I'm sure a firmware update will fix that soon. Plastic Industries claims that this targeting system is the most accurate ever. So even troopers like me can improve their hit rate with this sick new scope. <laughs> Finally, this will help us to crush the rebellion once and for all. But before we proceed, let me try connecting the blaster to my computer and see if I can calibrate the targeting system. Just a second. Almost there. Oh, what the f what? Piece of sh Come on. And Dang we're back. Freak. Just a little reboot and we're back in business. Maybe calibration isn't that necessary. The E11 also features biometric voice authentication that is coded to your voice only. All you have to do is say, Hey, Blaster. Ready for command. How many shots do I have left? <laughs> Sorry, command cannot be processed. <laughs> okay, must be my accent or the helmet incompatibility. Let's try again. Hey, Blaster. Set Blaster to, uh, stun. Sorry, Blaster Jawas for fun is not a valid command. <laughs> okay, so maybe this needs a firmware update as well. I'll just give you an update in a later review. And finally, let's check out what we've all been waiting for. Yes, fellow troopers, the myth, the legend. Will the new blaster really be as accurate as claimed? I am so excited. So to try out the blaster, let's move over to our state-of-the-art Imperial shooting range. Okay, so I'll be using the new scope to aim at the target at the far end of the shooting range. Okay, here we go. Whoa! Oh, wrong setting there. <laughs> All right, let me fix that. Okay. Ah. <laughs> I've got this. Let's 